So this last month has been uh, one hell of a year. Probably how I could start this. This is a business vlog, so welcome. I haven't done this in about a month. You know, the last one was not a fun one to put out, but we're not really here to talk about the past. I guess we are here to talk about the past a little bit, uh, but these business vlogs are to focus on the future of BDGE, what we have in store, just documenting the process of building the business, something that I've, I've always done, you know, sometimes sporadically, sometimes more often. The last one we put out was obviously one, that wasn't a fun one. It was the least fun one I've probably ever done. And of course, it, you know, it sparked a lot behind the scenes externally I and mean, I've always used these videos to to open up this has always been for me the best and easiest way to express myself and that's what I'm doing here so if you don't care about the behind the scenes you don't care about this, I'm not here to cause drama again I'm not here to look back on and, and like bring up old shit I'm uh, I'm more so here to reflect on it and, and talk about like what I've learned the lessons I've learned and moving forward like what I could take from it and again yeah just like document what we are going through internally relevant to what it looked like externally I don't think it's something that happens often I don't think it's something that people probably talk about often so I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about it. For those of y'all that are just getting up to speed, about a month ago I made a video talking about how we had let go of two of our full-time employees. It was a very quick vlog just like giving an update that they wouldn't be in the content anymore, they wouldn't be in the office anymore, etc, etc. And I'm not, again, I'm not here to like talk about that, the the ins and outs of that. We are, we're past that, we're moved on about that, I'm not trying to bring that back up. Uh, what that did was spark outrage, particularly on the TikTok platform. Now in the video I made on the YouTube platform, there was, I I wouldn't say it sparked outrage, but there was feedback, right? There was criticism, there was all of these things and everyone has an opinion and that's completely validated. And I like when people have opinions. I put myself out there to get the opinions of other people because I mean, I put myself out there to hopefully relate to other people and other people have gone through these things and they have an opinion on it. But hopefully I can help people that are going through things that are similar. That's why I make these. Point being, the reaction to, to what happened had, had kind of fallen into two groups. I would look at it as like YouTube and, and TikTok. YouTube, there was definitely negative criticism towards us and me, but I thought it was warranted. I thought it was validated. I thought it was coming from a place of like understanding the situation and giving your actual honest feedback about things. And some people were like, I just don't like the content anymore. Some people were like, since you got into the office, the contents fell off. Some people, you know, were like, bring back old shows. That, that's what I watched this for. You've lost some of the magic that brought, like all of these things, I thought extremely warranted. Like if, if you don't like the content that we put out anymore because we've changed X, Y, or Z, you don't like the content we put out anymore because these people aren't in it anymore. That's real criticism. That's real feedback. If you're like, hey, your fantasy now, analysis isn't good anymore because your head's not in it like real feedback that I take to heart and I actually you know I listen to and I look at and I read and those are things I appreciate no matter literally no matter how negative they are because most of the people that leave the negative feedback do it with a place of I don't really know how to word this do it with a place of like they're trying to get the best out of us like they're angry because we gave them something that they really enjoyed and then maybe we don't give that to them anymore and they're angry about that so it comes from a place of pureness which I appreciate TikTok went crazy and that was completely expected internally things were weird for a little while. Weird in the sense of like, okay, there's a little bit of shakeup, there's a little bit of change. I sat down with the guys and I think the best way to face anything that is bumpy or traumatic like this is always with like open transparency. I think the only way you build relationships is through trust. And the only way you get trust in a relationship is through transparency, for better or worse. And it, you, I mean, you can't really give transparency if it's not for worse. When things are bad, that is when you need to be transparent. So I sat down with everybody internally, just spilled my complete mindset about what was happening, what happened, what we're doing going forward. And I think that was very well received. And I think everyone understood where I was coming from internally. So internally, we just knew we were gonna have to like fight a little bit of a battle for a little while. Realistically, there hasn't been much that it, that's changed. If you've been following the, the I don't know what you wanna even call it at this point, the saga on TikTok, things have gone, uh, or at least they went quite, uh, quite viral, quite nuclear, uh, but they've obviously cooled down since and with time, everything pretty much cools down. Now we just have like 50 or 60 people that continuously comment negative things on our TikTok over and over and over again, which is again expected, could, could care less. Would I rather not have negative comments every single time we post a video? Sure. But like those people never, there's never like a comment of substance. There's never anything with actual feedback or criticism. There's just people posting things that they think will get the most likes. They'll just post negative comments that will get the most likes. After the videos dropped, both of the guys made announcements on TikTok about not working here anymore. I made an announcement on the BDG TikTok about them not working here anymore. And then after that, my emails, my personal DMs, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok went crazy. It you would have thought I like sexually assaulted a woman. The TikTok people that follow us on there thought they were canceling me. And the entire experience has gave me like crazy perspective on social media that I hadn't seen. I had never seen this side of social media. I had seen it externally. 
I had never experienced it. I did a little bit, I guess, when we dropped the Big Dog Basher BG3 originally. But I also thought the questions surrounding that were the vitriol and the hate surrounding it was insane. Like we were, there was never a scam behind it. But the questions were warranted that were asked about it, whether it was taxes or liability, like all that kind of shit, warranted. But this is a real world where people get let go from their job. There's nothing unethical or immoral about it. It's just a, an extremely unfortunate situation. But on a platform like TikTok, where the demographic is much, much younger, and we grew, for those of you guys that only watch YouTube or might just be tuning in, have no fucking idea what's going on, we have a very large following on TikTok. It's over 600,000, or now it's under. We probably lost 50,000 followers from this whole debacle. The large majority of this following came from this series that we did where we guessed, like, it's called Guessing Ice Launch. We guessed Ice Launch. It had absolutely nothing to do with football, had absolutely nothing to do with fantasy football, had nothing to do with our business. It was just something that got very, very popular. So most of the following that we have were people that knew us from that, which is why we got such backlash from the decision that I made. And again, I went in knowing that, I was like sick to my stomach all week, knowing that I had to have those conversations and then knowing that all of these things were to come. Like I knew the next month, two months, three months would be crazy, would be hell, would be all this nonsense going out all over the place. A platform like TikTok loves to create like, uh, there's, there's just, it's just black and white. Like there's a winner and a loser, there's a villain and a hero. And I was very aware of how the situation was going to play itself out. But I had to do what I thought was best for my business. I had to follow my gut, I had to follow my instinct. It is something that I've been doing for the last eight or nine years. And it has led me to the point of where I am now. There's no reason to mistrust it for me. And I have not once second guessed my decision. I have not once thought, regretted my decision whatsoever. It was just an extremely difficult one. And the aftermath was very difficult to deal with. So you're getting all this blowback on social media. It was Twitter, it was Instagram, it was TikTok. It was, you know, YouTube when I put out the vlog. But again, I, the YouTube comments were warranted 95% of the time if they were negative ones. And again, I got so many personal DMs and I don't really read into that shit. I know if you're going out of your way to leave a negative comment on someone's like personal shit like that, it comes from a place of like you being the one that's hurt and you're hoping to drag me down to also feel hurt and make you feel better about yourself, which is very odd behavior, but man, that's like what the internet has kind of become. And it's so funny because every DM kind of started the same way. It was literally like, fuck you, you're a loser, you suck, your business sucks, your business is gonna fail, all this shit. And every single, and I would reply to most of them. I'd be like, thank you, you know, like, thank you. You guys know how I am with the comments. A lot of the times I'm snarky, but I also wanted to wait to kind of talk about this and address the situation at all until there were other things kind of set. One, again, Animal and Ike are two guys that I have a bond with that I will have forever, the, regardless of how they look at me or feel about me now. And that's not saying they feel any sort of way. I'm just saying in general, I, I, I don't know. Those guys are two guys that I, I want to see do very well and I want to see be successful. Like Animal put out Animal's House on the Faith of Public channel last week on YouTube. And I was pumped to see that. It was one of my favorite fucking pieces of content that they did. And I wanted to make sure that they were secure for you know, what they were doing going forward before I even thought about like, I don't even want to use the word addressing the situation because everything with like TikTok is like, address this, address this. I'm not doing this for y'all. I'm doing this for me because this is how I express myself. But I wanted to make sure like out of the sincerity that I feel for them, that they were secure for the future that like, if I started to talk about any of this stuff, I knew a lot of stuff would surface back to them. And I don't want, again, I don't want to bring up like old drama. I'm not, again, I'm just trying to like talk about the situation for us. But I knew that opening up about the last month would bring them back into the fold. And I wanted to make sure that if somehow there was any blowback on them, they were already good to go. And I know that they are, which makes me feel a lot more comfortable talking about the situation now. And it's so funny. Cause like you see, it's like a running joke. It's like celebrities get like canceled and stuff like that. I'm not calling myself a celebrity. And we didn't get canceled whatsoever. People on, in the TikTok comments might say we get canceled, but like one, the people that were following us on TikTok were never gonna be with us for the long term because what we have planned for the long term has nothing to do with like what we were doing on that platform to begin with. So all the people that leave the negative comments and now they're like, oh, your content sucks. We're like, oh, fuck you guys, run following. It's like, not to sound like a dick, but good riddance, you know? Because again, you were probably never gonna be there for the long term anyways. And listen, I can't really blame them because they didn't know us before we blew up on TikTok from that series. They didn't know us from YouTube. They didn't know us from fantasy football. And that was uh, that was my fault for not being the one that like made sure we went down that path. So for me to get mad at them for not knowing us for that and then getting mad about it, like it, it, it's a stupid cycle that I don't care for anymore. But it's crazy because like you see celebrities, you know, get canceled. When they get canceled for things, it's always like really unethical, immoral things, racism or 
children shit or like whatever the fucking case may be. Some shit that like, yeah, you should get canceled for, right? And it leads to outrage among the public and the public is loud enough to where fucking movie directors or sponsors of these celebrities pull out their deals with them. And that's cancellation. Like that is like, okay, you actually fucked with that person's money because it was worth fucking with. And that person's not a good person and they deserve to lose a lot of the stuff that they got. Assuming that we have enough context to know that that person did something bad. The craziest part of the situation, the most eye-opening part of the situation was that like, there was literally nothing unethical or immoral about what happened here. And then there were so many comments like trying to, you know, like cancel us, but it changes. Man, it's crazy because like we grew that following, but the, the following had nothing to do with our business. So we could have literally deleted our TikTok profile like the next day after it happened. Financially, we would be fine. The decision I made was not financial at all. We're very, very healthy financially. We've secured something long-term financially. Like we're gonna be good for a while, you know? A group of people operate together in a way to try to like make something happen. I'm not piecing this together correctly. And it was crazy because when it first started, I was, like I said, I was like sick to my stomach the week leading up to having to have those conversations and afterwards the week two weeks after it were awful too and it was I might really really say it was the first time in my life like I leaned on other people to get me through this I'm not someone who goes to other people with their problems I'm not I'm, I internalize a lot of problems the only time I really talk about my problems is like when I'm going on YouTube to make one of these fucking vlogs, honestly. I, I was never good at opening up to my friends and my family when I was younger. These have always been a way for me to, to talk about it externally, which is obviously not fucking healthy, but it's how I operate. This was the first real situation I felt like I went through that I was so overwhelmed by so many moving parts that I just like, there was nothing I could do but pour out to other people, right? Like I was on the phone every day with, whether it was my mom, my sister, Steve, just random friends that reached out to me, other people that are in similar situations, like business owners that understand what I'm going through, you know, just, just friends realistically. And it was such a fucking eye-opening experience for me. And it's so, I'm 30 years old. Don't let the baby face fool you. I'm getting older, but like, sometimes I feel like I'm getting dumber as I get older. Like I'm not getting wiser, but this was an experience that I go through and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm earning my stripes and you know, as a business owner, but like in life, this was really, really the first time I felt like I leaned on other people to get me through something really, really difficult. And it made the process not easy by any means, but not overbearing, like trying to deal with this all of myself and like internalize everything and act like everything is okay would have would have been something I probably did five years ago and tried to push through and then been in a really bad place a few months later, but it's not what I did. And like, I don't know, I guess um, it, it was a, again, eye opening for me because it's something that I will absolutely do going forward. And it really made me cherish the relationships I have with people because there were people I didn't really expect to like really be able to lean on in this time. They kind of like came out of nowhere and I was like, man, you're a good fucking friend. You're really here for me in some time where like, I'm not doing anything for you. I'm just sitting here fucking complaining. I'm sitting here sad, depressed, like, and you're just sitting here listening to me fucking vent about it, man. And uh, I know this is like, oh, fucking guy learns what a friend is. I know, but this, is, this was like at a much larger scale, you know? And it made me like step back from work because for so long, I've been working on BDG since I was fucking 20 years old, right? And I'm 30 now, like 10 years of this shit, man. 10 years, day in and day out, seven motherfucking days a week, every goddamn day. It's become who I am. It is, it is my identity. It is, you know, what I do, it is who I am, it is what I represent, it's everything I pour into this. And when you do that, it's dangerous. It's dangerous because when things turn badly, it goes badly for you personally. You know what I mean? It's like, if my whole identity and my whole personality and my whole everything gets attached to this business, if it ever does end really poorly, I don't wanna know where I'm gonna be. I don't wanna know where my head's gonna be at. And it made me realize that like, at the end of the day, when shit goes sour, the only thing you really have are the relationships that you have with other people at the end of the day. And I felt so fucking thankful at the end of this process, so fucking thankful that I have friends and I have family and I have people that I can relate to and that I'm close to that were there for me. Because I don't know what the fuck I would have done if I didn't have that. And I know, and the reason I feel so fucking grateful is because I know that there are people out there that don't have that. And fuck man, I gotta get back to my roots and like be that person for people. And that's why I try to make these videos too to relate, but also I need to open up one-on-one -on -one conversations with people about this shit. Like if you're having trouble, if you're having problems, not like social media people fucking commenting negative shit, but that too, you know, if you have those types of problems, like please DM me, please comment down below. I will try to relate and try to talk to you and 
talk through you with this stuff. But yeah, that, that was the biggest lesson for me. It's just like, it's not healthy. It's really not healthy for me to attach myself to what we're doing to this intense of a level. It's healthy to be really passionate about it, man. I've always thought that my biggest strength was like my passion and my work ethic towards this and my work ethic stems from my passion towards what we're building here. I'll always have that, man. And I'll always want to push the boundaries and try to innovate and 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 try to give 100% to everything I do. Um, and sometimes that ends up presenting itself as like an outlandish or outbearish personality. And maybe that turns some people off, but I'm proud to be that way. I'm proud to be this passionate. I, don't re I really don't know that many people that I've ever come across that uh, that I've met or that are as passionate as I am. And, I, and I'm very, very proud of it. But there are times where I get ahead of myself when I'm, when I'm so passionate about something that I do things. I make decisions based purely off passion and not sitting on things for a day or two days or three days and thinking them through, committing wholeheartedly and then realizing, like, ah, fuck, shouldn't have done this. But on the contrary, I've also learned not to judge myself for having to pull back the reins on things. Super passionate about something, I jump into it and then I realize, hmm, not that passionate about it, you know? And it, some parts make you feel like a failure. Some parts make you feel like, I said I was gonna do this thing, man, and now I'm not doing it. Or I set this goal and I'm not gonna hit it. Like, what are people out there gonna think? If I, I said this externally, I put myself out there to do it, and now people are gonna see that I'm a loser. People are gonna see that I'm a failure. People are gonna see all this. But listen, the only people that are judging you for those things are the people that would never put shit out themselves. The people that would never go out on a limb, stick their neck out and say, hey, I wanna accomplish this goal. Those are the people that are the ones that would judge you because they never put themselves in those shoes, man. If you're gonna go out and, and be passionate about some shit and strive after some shit, you would never waste your time judging other people for trying to do the same thing. I, I think the most admirable fucking thing in the world is putting yourself out there and being vulnerable and being like, man, I really wanna try this. I really am so fucking wholeheartedly passionate about this shit and I'm gonna go out there and give it my fucking everything. I don't care what the result is. I love people like that shit is at the core of who I am, what I believe and what I love. That's It's at the fucking core of who I am. If you're willing to put yourself out there, I don't care if it doesn't work. I don't care if you have to give up after fucking 10 tries. I'd rather you give up after a thousand tries. I'd rather you never fucking give up, but be aware about what you like, what you don't like. You don't need to have a goal. You don't need to get anywhere, but you need to love the fucking process of what you're doing. And I love people who can love the process. I love passionate people. I realized, I realized over the last month, two months, I'm just passionate about passionate people. What a weird fucking thing to be in love with so this is the next day after i filmed that vlog and as i'm editing the vlog i realized there's a lot of pieces and bits that i forgot to say or i left out or that i was still feeling that i wanted to include in it but i didn't so somehow that was already so long and now i'm prolonging it but i got a question in the big content discord mainly just a message because me and jack haven't done an episode in a while because he's been traveling for a super bowl all-star weekend he's in aruba whatever uh, but there's a question that made me want to touch on a handful of other things that I felt like I missed out on in the original video. So so in the big content discord, uh, Steen Machine writes, Honestly, I think we're all very excited for the big content whenever it is. Not trying to be weird, I'm just interested to see Nick address everything going on with BDGE, not even the firing or any part of that. Just kind of a roadmap for how to deal with the hate. The comments on every video are just a cesspool of non-useful shit talk. Just interested to see how he's holding up and dealing with it. Love to see him. Uh, persevering at all of this. So, you know, this video for me, like I've said many times throughout, and I say in every single vlog, is basically these vlogs are a way for me to express myself, but I also hope that you guys can take things away from them and either relate to them or learn from them. So he was, you know, he kind of was asking, like, I want to see him address the, the roadmap for how to deal with the hate. So I wanted to go a little bit more into that uh, on this segment, which I didn't feel like I did a good job yesterday explaining that. And I think the first thing to say is, like, I, you and everybody, I have to be able to admit that that shit doesn't feel good. Like, I don't want people writing hate comments on every fucking video we post. It sucks. So when you're getting that stuff, the biggest thing that I, I knew, but I took away again from this experience was that those people who were commenting, who still are commenting, who might even comment on this video, literally have zero impact on my real life. Like, not a lick of impact. Those, you could almost just think of them as like bots. I, I generally think like probably half of those are like 14, 15 year olds on TikTok, especially probably like 90% of them. So sometimes I like see a 14 year old walking in the street and I imagine that's him like on his phone writing on our TikTok and it kind of makes me fucking laugh actually. But that being said, like those people literally have no impact on my life. And I know this for a fact because after I posted the video, the TikTok video on the BDG TikTok, basically announcing that Animal and Ike were no longer working at BDG anymore, I 
deleted the TikTok app from my phone because I knew what was going to come. This is not something I suggest if you're trying to figure out how to deal with hate comments, if you're a creator, that this is not what I would suggest. I'm just telling you how I dealt with it based on what I knew the reaction was going to be because there was going to be nothing in the comments for me. It was all going to be completely negative or things that got me fired up and angry and made me do things that I would regret probably within like two hours. So I was like, this is not gonna be good for me. I'm going to delete the TikTok app and I will prove to myself just how much it does not matter to my actual life. So I deleted the app. I put my phone down. I went outside, I touched some grass. That was a statement I had to say to Tony quite a few times. Go touch some fucking grass. I did that and I realized very quickly that yes, literally nothing in my life had changed. It did not impact the friendships I had with my friends. It did not impact my ability to have a relationship with a significant other. I fucked that up on my own. They do not impact the business relationships that I've built over the last seven or eight, nine years. They do not impact our business whatsoever financially, despite what they think they do. And in fact, I would argue that they actually strengthen, at least for me personally, most of those things because they kind of forced me, like I said, to turn to those people. And when you're transparent and open and vulnerable with people, you build something very strong with them even through business. Remember, when you're transacting business with people, it's just person to person. It's just you to another person. That's what business to business is. So those things strengthen relationships. And to be honest, I just, I stayed off most of social media for like a week besides doing my work. Like all I did, the only thing we could do at that point was just put our head down and work really hard. So I, I, I made videos. I did my research for my fantasy rookie dynasty shit, got really focused and just like stayed off social because I knew it was gonna be really, really negative for like a week or two. And to be honest, I have needed like a cold turkey break from social media for so long. I've tried to do it so many times and just never been able to do it. And this was like a real reason to do it. And it felt fucking phenomenal. And really ironically, it was like the best I've slept in probably like two years. But going back to the beginning point, like there are so many quotes about this same type of situation they're all along the line of like don't take criticism from people that you would never go to advice for which is very much the point here and that's why i was bringing up like the people from youtube like i do appreciate your feedback and your advice because you've been here for a while and you understand what we're about but 99 percent of those people have literally never met me as a person they don't know anything about me they have no idea who i am they don't know what we're about but they're out here making like full video, full like breakdown videos, like grown ass men making full breakdown videos about the situation here, which was a non-situation in real life. They have no context. They play zero role in my life. So if they play zero role in my real life, they get zero of my actual attention. Now, what I think is important when you're going through times like this, when you do turn to those people, right? Like had I gone to my mom or my sister or my family or Steve or any of my friends or the employees or the, the fellow business owners. And they were like, what are you doing here? Have you really thought this through? This is a bad look. Nick, are you sure about this? You gotta check yourself here. If that was the sentiment I got from people that I actually cared about and, and, and know and trust and they know me and they know the full context and they know the full story, yeah, I would have to rethink things and, and, you know, reconsider things. But that was not this. But like I said before, like the only thing we could do in this situation was to put our head down and just keep working. Just keep showing up every single day and reprove over time. If it's needing to build trust back up, that's fine. Because we are reproving that we are who we think we are. That we are who you think we are. Or if you don't think highly of us, then we will reprove to you that you should think differently of us. And we are who you guys are are originally came here for. Anything besides doing exactly that would have just been extremely inflammatory to the situation. So we were just gonna keep showing up. You know, we put our schedule, we had our schedule, like we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. This happens every single day. I don't care what the comments are. I don't care what the feedback is. Nothing about it is bad. It's all good content. It's all well-intended. There's nothing inflammatory or bad behind it. We just keep showing up every single day and doing that. And 99.9% .9 of the people will fall back and stop caring and stop pretending like they cared in the first place. And everything will get back to normal quickly. And that happened for the most part. Again, we have like 50 people that continue to comment on like every one of our TikTok videos. And that's really the only change we've seen at this point. But I wanted to make sure things were as anti-inflammatory, some fucking Advil shit as possible, uh, which does, I guess, uh, Tony did put out a video at one point on his personal TikTok, uh, which I did not see before he posted, which was a little, uh, I don't know how to put it. It wasn't, I appreciated it. He was just having my back, which I, I very much appreciated. It was, 
it was probably a little bit, uh, I mean, definitely inflammatory, but a little, maybe a little bit unhinged given the situation at, at that point. It was raw, it was emotional, which he took a lot of heat for, and that situation is something that he will learn from. He's, he's I mean, he's very, very young. Uh, at that age, he's 24, I'm 30. When I was 24, I really haven't had any sort of negative um, external happenings in my business or my personal life really up until this year. So I've stayed off that radar for a while. The, he is experiencing this at a very young age, so he will learn from this situation. As the leader there that you know continues to say, I didn't want to make things worse, there was a part of me in that situation, basically he texted us this. And when he did that, there was a part of me that outright wanted to just say no. No, nothing. We don't put anything out. I said what I said and it's over. But then there's the other part of me where he was like, I wanna post something and I wanna get something off my chest. And I think of myself and I'm like, how can I come on here and make videos like this and open up and give everything that I have and have someone that you know, hopefully follows me in Tony and then say he's not allowed to do that and have people under me that are not allowed to express themselves. So that would not have been right. That would have been extremely hypocritical. So I said a few things that I, I just told him you need to think very, very long and very, very hard before you post because we are in a moment in time right now that will be exponential towards whatever you're saying into the mic right now. I want you to think long and hard about how it's gonna come off, about who it's going to affect, about all of those things. And to be honest with you, the video he made was not a big deal whatsoever, but the platform in TikTok, again, likes to make a, a black and white decision, a good and bad, a hero and a villain decision. So regardless of the content that he put in that video, I genuinely believe that had people been looking at like BDGE as the winners here or whatever, all the comments would have been positive. They didn't, regardless of what Tony actually said in the videos, that's the way that platform works. They choose the winner and then they continue to pile on those winnings regardless of what you actually do. So like at that point when like BDG was the loser in the situation, Tony was still, you know, an employee obviously and still is, uh, being part of that part of the equation became the negativity side of everything. Well, that was like another you know, complex part of the situation. I think at the end of the day, when you're dealing with people online, especially that, there's just nothing you can do. You cannot waste all your time and your mental energy on caring about people that have no impact on your real life, no impact on your day to day, on your physical life, on your relationships, which is the most important thing. And I know it's much easier said than done. And it, it may take you a while to get there. If you are a content creator getting negative feedback, listen, I think as long as you're passionate, well-intended and work hard, the negativity should be kept to a very, very, very minimum. That's always been my experience. Of course, we faced hiccups and we are facing a hiccup right now, but we continue to go back to that formula, passion, hard work, well-intended, and things will get back to normal again. Keep that in mind. If the people close to you have feedback for you, listen, ears open. You see how big these fucking ears are? Use them. Otherwise, all that negative energy is, how do you think people give negative energy? Because they have it, they have it. If you don't have something, you can't give something. If you are not so negative inside, like those people are so negative inside, that's the only reason they have negativity to give. Th think, of, like literally think, I think I just had a breakthrough right there. Think about someone who is so positive, someone who is so happy, genuinely, someone who is so happy, what negativity do they have to give? They're not out here giving negativity to people because they're not negative internally, right? They don't have like, imagine you have a basket, right? Of things to give away to people. If you are only a positive person, you only have positivity things, you can't give negativity to people. You understand what I'm saying? So when people leave negative comments, understand it's not a reflection on you, unless you're a piece of shit, then maybe it is. But understand it is a reflection on what those people are dealing with internally, right? And again, like I've been in this game for a long time, so I've understood that for a while. I knew what I was getting into when I made this decision. And that is that, back to the other part of the video. But yeah, at the end of the day, the very first thing I said to the guys when I sat them down, I was like, BDGE going forward is gonna be built on three fucking foundations, three pillars, three pillars that run everything. They run everything for our business. And anything that doesn't fall in these three categories, in these three pillars are secondary, they're tertiary, they don't matter. If we got time to get to them, cool. If not, I don't give up. Cause I think a lot of what happened was we got into this office space and then my mind went like, let's fucking get it. Let's get everything, everywhere, all at the same time. And it just led me astray from, from what got us to be so successful in the first place. And I still, still truly believe that you'll be far more impactful 
I ironically, not by going wider, by going deeper. It feels like no matter, like you hit a niche, right? And then you go deeper and then you go deeper and deeper and deeper and you feel like, you know, you can't get any deeper. You can't connect anymore with these people, but that is what wider connection is. Wider connection is deeper. It's not about getting more subscribers or getting more followers, getting more audience members. It's about perfecting where you are and then bridging off of that. So we have three pillars. Number one, we wanna make great fantasy football content year round. Draft coverage, rookie coverage, dynasty coverage, season long prep coverage, and in season coverage. Something I think we fell short of last year. So number one, make great fantasy football content year round. Number two, make great fantasy football products for the audience that loves our great fantasy football content. And number three, document the process of us doing those things. That is our bread and butter. That is our steak. That is our fucking asparagus. That is our steak knife fork. That is our dessert. It's our espresso martini after dessert. That is the nightcap. And that is the melatonin that puts us to sleep. I'm so convinced that these three things will take us so far as a company if we get back to doing them great foundationally. This is how I built my brand from the rip. Great content, it's really shitty products when we started for sure, but documenting the process, that was it. And it's the only thing I'm passionate about getting back into. We will be bringing on someone, possibly two people, to continue to build out full-time fantasy creators. Because what happened was in the office, we didn't have a single person that was doing what I was doing. We didn't have a single person making actual fantasy football content. And that's not their problem. Like I didn't hire anyone to do that. So that was me jumping into this, oh, let's fucking scale and do all this shit without thinking anything through. But what happens when we try to scale is that I get all these things put on my plate, whether it's talking to lawyers or accountants or these real estate people or new partners or brands, or these 50,000 different things that start to pop into my plate that become more and more and more demanding of my time as we get bigger, but there's no one to fill in what I was doing beforehand. And if we don't have that piece of our business, we're not sustainable at all. So we wanna bring on creators that I think mesh with our brand, that I think have our personality, but also absolutely fucking get after it in the fantasy streets and can bring the edge and the charisma that you guys have hopefully gotten from me over the last eight years. That will translate to the products because they will be able to help me make the products. Like when we make the season long draft guide, I, for the most part, make almost all of it. Over the years, I've had probably help here and there, a few people doing a few things, but I've made like 95% of the products that we've made. And it's so much work for me to do in a time where I'm making so much content throughout the summer for fantasy. And I've been so hesitant to outsource this work. I don't know why, I'm, I feel like I'm, maybe I'm just like so fucking narcissistic. I'm like, oh, you guys only love me on camera. But I realized you guys have fallen in love with so many different people that I've put on camera. Again, going back to Animal and Snacks, you guys love them. And then when I brought on Noah, FB God, and Mike Me Up, and now the new Noah. Like, I've been pretty fucking good at this. I don't know why I've been so hesitant to get someone more involved in like a real capacity in this sense. But bring on the content creator that hopefully you guys will learn to love. And like everybody, when you start, everyone's like, ah, who's this fucking guy? Like, if we went back a year ago when Noah probably put out his first video, you guys were like, who the fuck is this guy? And now you guys love him. I can't get it. You guys probably like his content more than you like my content, which I wouldn't blame you for. His shit is so good. And I've been to the process plenty of time with a lot of people. So bring on the content creator and they in turn help create the new products because they'll help take a lot of the work off my plate for that. And then they can help me be creative and think of new product ideas and new content ideas while also being the ones that execute and follow through on those things, which is exciting for me to have someone be like, even if it's 70% of me or 80% of me, that's what I need. I need someone who like, if I need to leave the office for three days, if I need to take care of these two or three or for pressing business matters, we still need to have amazing dynasty and rookie and season long and in season rankings and tiers and all that shit that we had some of that last year, but not all of it. We need to have all that. And I've just learned so fucking much this year. Like I feel like this year, this year is it's been the biggest lesson learned. Like I can't imagine I'm gonna have a year that was tougher than this previous year, which is probably like famous last words. And I'm sure I'll have like six more. I really hope I don't. It was a very, very tough year emotionally, like from start to finish the entire office. And it's actually crazy because I'm filming this on February 24th and in one week, we will have been, maybe by the time you guys watch this, uh, March 1st, it will officially be one year in the office. And good Lord, like, do you, the, 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 the journey you have to go through in life to learn lessons sometimes is so fucking insane. Sometimes I feel like the dumbest motherfucker alive. I'm like, man, I really didn't have to do all that to like go through all that trauma and go through all that dramatic experience and go through all that shit. But then there's part of me that's like, man, on the other side of all this pain and suffering is like greatness. And I feel like I'm so much better for it. And as a leader and as a boss and as like a someone who's looking towards the future, I feel like I'm in such a good place right now. And I think a lot of this coming off, we had a really good day at the office today, really creative day, a lot of brainstorming and felt so good to get back into it. As you can see, I'm like riding a high from it right now, but that's it. We want to get back to the foundation. Great content, great products, documenting the process.
Sorry, the camera died. I was using an actual camera. Now I have my phone set up with like a fake mic. So if the audio slash video comes out terrible, I'm gonna be devastated honestly, because I felt like I was on a fucking roll there and I wanted to continue and finish up this video. I don't even remember where I was at, the, at this point. Uh, we we're gonna have so much fun doing that. I think that's what I was saying. I'm very optimistic about the future. We just made some nice moves behind the scenes that will uh, secure us for quite a while. I think a lot of you guys will be very, very excited about it. But yeah, what a fucking year, man. What a full circle year. I'm, I was just thinking about like, this time last year, before we moved into the office space, I am, if, I mean, if you guys have been watching my, you know, my content the last couple of weeks where it's just been like rookie dynasty content, you probably tell I'm like fired up and I'm like passionate about the content I'm making again because I've been solely focused on that. It's the only thing I've been focused on. Like I literally, I haven't even, I, I like, I haven't been on social media like, and it's fine. Oh, and I think I was talking about, man, these fucking venting sessions I go on on these videos. I just go all over the place because I think of like things I want to say and then I go to a different place. So I was talking about how like, uh, so I was sitting down with my, our, our developer, Chris, and he was just talking about like, yeah, like my favorite, uh, my favorite comedian, Shane, uh, fuck, we were just watching him today at the office too. Shane Gillis, Shane, I forget what his name was, whatever it was, like my favorite comedian got like canceled because uh, he said a, a racist slur. Like he's not ill-intented whatsoever, but he went through it and he actually got canceled because, you know, he said something that was racist and people will cancel you for that and it'll be problematic but then he kind of went on like a podcast tour he went on the joe rogan podcast tour and me i was just opening up to chris and he was like yeah like i don't i don't know if you can relate to this but the guy was talking about how like when he got canceled it was it was like liberating in a sense because it's just like all right like fuck it like this is just the way people are going to feel about me no matter what you know there's this huge su subsection of people like on tiktok that don't really know who i am will never know who i am and will just continue to like hate me for the things that they do know about. So it's like going forward, no matter what I do, no matter what I post, no matter what I say, no matter what uh, I could give money to charity, and those people will find ways to paint it in a negative light. It kind of frees up your mind to be like, hey, like anything I do is gonna get hate regardless. So just like work from a place of true intent and passion. And uh, I don't think anything I've ever done in business has ever been ill-intended. I don't think I'll ever will do something like that is. And it is a little bit liberating just being like, okay, there's always gonna be people that are gonna hate on everything you do, especially at this scale. So I don't wanna get delusional and be like, oh, everything I do, like, I'm gonna do bad shit, but like, people are just saying it's bad because they're haters. Like, nah, of course I'm gonna do bad shit. And uh, I will I will leave it to the YouTube people to, to tell me whether or not I'm going down the wrong or right path most of the time, because I feel like you guys have a good head on your shoulders. So yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm clearly in good spirits right now. I'd be lying if I said I was, you know, pre the situation, post the situation. But again, like, and a lot of the comments on the last YouTube video were like, oh my God, there's just so much drama all the time. It feels like this has turned into like a soap opera. And like, those are ones I heard. And I was like, man, there's part of me that just agrees. Like, I like making vlogs, but sometimes it feels like I'm just doing so much shit wrong that they do turn into soap operas. And I'm like, I'm not here to do that anymore. I feel like I've learned most of what I've needed to learn the hard way in order to progress the right way, you know? So this has been one fucking hell of a year. Wow, that is an actually epic title given that we've been in the office for a year. This last month has been one hell of a year. My biggest takeaways, I don't even mean this from a business sense, just a, a personal standpoint. This was one of the more difficult situations I've gone through in my life. This was this was very, very crazy. And I, I'm proud of myself for leaning on other people that I knew, you know, loved me and cared about me, but it was nice to be able to like, you know, put that to use, I guess you could say. And it, it took a burden off my soul and my heart a little bit. So those people know who they are and I love them very much, each and every one of them. As tough times approach, I will learn to, you know, from a business owner standpoint, outsource more, I guess we could say. And I will be doing that more internally, business-wise as well. I need to think things through. I think I need to sleep on things. I think that was another big les uh, lesson learned in this situation. There was a, a point at which I wanted to do something and uh, a friend of mine told me to sleep on it before I did anything and uh, I still ended up doing it but I did it the next day and I saw it more clearly and I agreed with him in terms of his process and it's something I want to do probably going forward it sucks I, I'm someone who like when I get something in my mind or I have an idea or I want to execute something like I want to get it out immediately like I want to do it I can't I'm not good at sleeping on it I don't sleep when I have something that I want to fucking, if I need to sleep on something, I don't sleep. That's the problem. This is a fucking bullshit cycle I have to go through with my stupid brain. But it does you a disservice not to. Because when you act irrationally, when you act emotionally, a lot of the times you act irrationally. I think something else I've learned is like, when you're in a really creative or passionate state, whether that's for negative or positive, I think putting the game plan in place and writing everything down is the right move. I think for me, maybe putting it out there into the world at that exact moment might not be the right move, but making sure I put it down on paper so I can execute how I'm feeling at the time 
and then in a few days seeing whether or not I still agree with it. I don't know if I'm gonna operate that way going forward to be honest with you, just because I'm an off the hip person, but it was something that helped me in this situation a little bit for sure. So there's that, and I mean, and this is not anything that I'm, you know, learning uh, now, but again, like transparency is always the key to like keeping something strong and keeping us, like even like Tony and Sexy internally, not that I had any doubt that they were gonna be like, oh, what the fuck's happening? Or I wanna leave or anything, but like, you know, it's a lot of heat for them. To, they're younger kids that are like, oh fuck, we're getting absolutely blown to fucking shreds on social media right now. Like, do I really wanna be a part of this? Like, this is not the same as when I first joined BDG a year ago, two years ago, whatever. Just being transparent and like showing them, showing people when you're going through situations that like, yeah, you're not fucking bulletproof whatsoever and you fuck things up. But like, if you can explain the thought process of what you were thinking and saying like, I need, like, I'm just trusting my feeling. I'm trusting my gut and I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything with ill intent. That stuff goes a long way with people. It goes, it doesn't even go a long way. It goes the whole fucking way. It goes the whole fucking way. I don't know what else to say. I don't even remember what I fucking said up to this point. I've been talking for a long time, I feel like. I gotta eat. The only thing I ate today, I was straight up, you could ask Sexy and Chris. I, I, I ate an avocado like straight, I sucked that shit straight out of the avocado. Like I just, we don't have a, we didn't have a fucking knife in the office. And I like took a fork and I like, plunged the end of an avocado, like the little circle point tip, and I took it out and I just like squeezed it. I ate that shit like a gogurt. It was the only thing I ate today and it's fucking, what time is it? I don't know what my phone is. Oh, it's, <laughs> my phone's fucking filming me right now. Uh, I wanna say it's like 7.30 or eight. This is what happens when I get into my work mode and I'm like fucking in it and I'm passionate about shit. Like I, I forget to eat. I actually forget to eat all the time. I never fucking eat. So, uh, what a year in the worst fucking way possible, but I cannot wait for the upcoming year. I think the upcoming year is going to be, um, I hope it's phenomenal. I don't know what it's gonna be. It can't, we'll put it this way, it can't be worse than this year. And it's funny, like from a business standpoint, like financially, I mean, it was our best year ever financially. We made, as, we made more money than we've ever made this year financially. But as you can see, like money is not ever a directive for me. It's not like, it's not what I define success as whatsoever. Money is just like an instrument. It's like any money to pay rent, any money to pay bills, any money to pay my bar tab, any money to pay for my avocados, and then everything else gets put back in the business, you know? Like, so when I say this was the worst year, it's it's so funny how that conflates with like best year financially, worst year personally. But the beautiful part about like worst year is as, as I've gotten older and I've gone through more and more intense experiences like this on the negative side. Like you really, I don't think I've really understood this until right now. And I think a lot of people use it as like a cliche and say it, but don't really understand it. I've stopped looking at these failures or negative things as that. They're now just fucking lessons. They're literally just lessons for me to become great. Like literally, I, I'm like, I'm on this path to fucking greatness. And in order to get there, you have to learn all this shit. Like you have to, and there's no way to learn in life without fucking things up. So the bigger the fuck up, the bigger leap I know I'm gonna take to get to the next level. It's weirdly, it's so fucking weird, but it's weirdly awful as it is exciting for me. Cause I know on the other side of that awful, that awfulness is something just as high the other way. So think about that when you're going through rough shit in life. Like when you're going through something really bad, that shit is going to strengthen you like nothing else you will go through. So that is what I learned this year. I learned that everything is a lesson. I learned that nothing is negative. And on the flip side, don't let the highs be too high. Don't let the lows be too low. My personal life is my personal life and I need to keep up with the relationships with the people that I love to a degree that I have sunk into my business up to this point. Because if something does go south in my business, if I don't want to do my fucking business anymore, what is there left for me at the end of the day? And it is those people. It was those people that were there for me over the last month, over the last year, over the last 10 years, even when I haven't been there for them. So I will continue to try to be there for you uh, and I hope you do the same for us. Um, and I love you. I'm out of here. I got to eat some pizza.